How's everybody doing today? This is Mickey. Well, today I would like to go through the use of vignettes in Lightroom. Now, a vignette is a real important tool, and I think I use it on just about every one of my photographs. But what it does, it allows you to enhance the photograph to help draw the viewer's eyes to the area of the photograph that you want them to view. It's very easy to put in place, but it has some subtlety to it. And notice I say subtle, because if we have a vignette, and let's just look at this, and we see dark edges. That's not subtle. That's kind of hammering it home where you want the viewer to see. But if we have a very simple vignette, very light, we do see that it is directing the viewer's eyes into the main subject. And that's what we're going to try to do today using several techniques, whether you're using the post crop vignetting tool or a radial linear gradient and any other of the gradient tools to make your vignette. So let's get started and I'll show you how we do this. All right, let's go through some of these tools that we have to create vignettes in Lightroom. The first one is the, the main tool and it's called the post crop vignetting tool. And it's a good tool to put basic vignettes in place, but it does have some limitations. So let's go through the tool and see what we can do with it and let you decide whether this is the tool we want to use when we do some of our vignetting. The first thing uh, that we notice uh, in the post crop vignetting tool is this style. And we have three options, highlight, color, and paint overlay. So what do these do? Let's heavy, get heavy handed here and put a real heavy uh, vignette on here because that's the best way to see what these tools do. Now the first one is highlight priority and it prioritizes preserving highlights. Now we'll put a vignetting in here so it's really hard to say well, what's it preserving but it, it is actually preserving highlights when we, we use this tool. Now the only con to this is is that when it's preserving highlights it can lead to color shifts in the darker areas. So you can see the back end of this boat was orange. Now it's not so much orange anymore. It's darkened that and, and change the saturation of those colors. All right, so that's highlight priority. Now let's go to color priority and I want you to watch the back end of this boat. So we'll go to color priority and you can see we got our color back in the boat. Now, just like the title says, color priority priorita prioritizes preserving color. But this can lead to highlighting shifts in brighter areas. So if you're real concerned about highlights, then color priority is probably not your, your choice. Uh, and you would have to adjust midpoint and roundness to, to bring in those areas that you want to preserve the color. The final one is called paint overlay. And paint overlay is very simply, it just applies black and white overlay, you know, darkening or lightening the edges without any consistent uh, consideration to color or highlights. And it also, uh, as you look at it, it has a very flat effect. So when we go back to highlight priority, you can see we have a lot more contrast in our highlights and it looks a lot more natural, has a little more pop to it than if we use paint overlay. And it's kind of the same way in cover overlay. Our highlights still have some contrast to them and look rather good. In addition, we can see the colors, but when we go to paint overlay, it does protect, the, it kind of provides us, you know, a little more color, but our other areas of the photograph look kind of flat. So you just have to play with it back and forth to see what works for you all together. Now to get this back to uh, the beginning, you can double click on post crop vignetting title up here and that will take away all the changes so we can start working on the photograph. Now let's look at these other sliders. The amount slider is exactly what it is. It applies the vignette either white or black or dark in the photograph. The next is midpoint, and midpoint is kind of like the size of the radial, the size of the vignette. So if we go inwards, you can see our vignette it gets a lot smaller to the central part of the photograph. When we move out, it widens up the, the vignette to the outside edges. I'm gonna uh, go down here to feather, and feather is the edge of the vignette. All right, so you can see the feather can be very mild, leading to a large area between the light area to the dark area, which makes the vignette very subtle, which is what we want. A little bit goes a long way with a vignette, so we always want to have it as subtle as we can get it without losing the effect of the vignette. All right, the one right above it is called roundness. I'm going to move the feather all the way in so we can see what the roundness does. And if we move the roundness to the right, it gets round. If we move it to the left, we start to get a square and moving to the edges. 
right? So that's what our roundness does. Usually when I'm working on my vignettes, I take the feather all the way down to zero, and that lets me see how much darkness I want to add to the vignette. It lets me adjust my midpoint, so I can see exactly where that vignette is going to start to feather as I move my feather out. The final slider is highlights, and this protects your highlights. So as we move the highlight slider, you can see our highlights at the top part of the screen. They're starting to lose some of the darkness of the vignette, and that's the tool just protecting the highlights. So let's take this back down to zero and just put a vignette on real quick. I'll bring my feather down to zero and I want the roundness to be about like this. I'll bring my midpoint in a little bit more. I want about that much darkness and then I just take my feather and crank it all the way out. Now once I have the feather out, I then move my uh, slider just a little bit to see what kind of effect I'm getting if it's very subtle. Remember the, the most that the best vignettes are the subtle ones that people don't even know that their eyes are being directed by the way you have put the vignette on. So if we look at our before, after, before, and after. Now there is one big con to using the post crop vignetting tool and that is I can't place the crop or the vignette anywhere that I need other than in the center. So as you see, if I, I'm gonna get real heavy handed here. So I've made my vignette and it's, the center of it is really in the center of the photograph. But if I wanted a vignette just around this portion of the photograph, there's no way I can do that. I can change my roundness, I can change my midpoint, and I can get close. But if I wanted this to be up higher in the photograph, I have no tool to adjust my crop to a higher portion of the photograph. And that's where the radio gradient, which has all these capabilities, we can move that to just about anywhere we want. All right, so let's take a look at the radio gradient. Uh, to start out with, I usually shrink my picture down just a little bit, uh, Command or Control minus, because the radio gradient usually is, when it's placed on the photograph, it goes beyond the canvas. So we need a little extra elbow room to work this out. We're gonna go up and create a radio gradient, and I'm gonna put my crosshairs where I want the center of the gradient to be, and I'm gonna drag out. As I drag out, I wanna go beyond the edges of the canvas, and once I get it out where I think it should be, I wanna go up and click Invert. And what we're gonna do is invert, so everything in the center is clear, and all the, the vignette is applied to the outside. And then I'm gonna apply my exposure. All right, so you can see how we're keeping that center part of the uh, boat in the vignette and then controlling the vignette with exposure. Now, you don't have to have the uh, feather as big as this. You could make it smaller by grabbing this and moving it around. And as you can see, let's, let's make it very dark so we can see the vignette. We can move this vignette to anywhere we want on the photograph. And that's what we couldn't do with the post crop vignetting tool. It's very important that we get this crop exactly like what we want. Now we can resize the feather by moving this inner circle. We can resize the vignette totally by grabbing any one of the sides and moving it down to make like our, a lower part uh, darker or uh, left or right darker. If you want to just make one side move, you hold your Option or Alt key and drag out and it'll just move that one side. You can see any side here. If you want to move it equilaterally, hold your Shift key down and grab any side and it'll move every side equally as we move in and out without changing the shape of your vignette. All right, once you have your vignette in place, I usually just go ahead and zoom back in so I can see the full picture. And here's where I can control my vignette style. So I bring my exposure down to my right here. If I want to bring up some of the lightness in my shadows, which we see down here, we can use our shadow slider to brighten that up. We can use our highlight slider to heighten or, uh, or lighten or darken our highlights in the top part and on some of these rocks. So it gives you a, a, a large amount of control uh, once you get that vignette in place. Now once you get it in exactly like you want, remember that magic slider that you have when you're using masking is our amount slider. So now that we have it defined exactly like we want, we can now use the amount slider to see if there's any way that we can make this a little better. Maybe make it just a little darker, about like this.
So now if we look at this vignette, before, after, before, after. So when we look at it not knowing we've put a radio gradient in here, it looks like we have really done a good job at bringing the viewer's eye into this central area. But you don't see the dark edges, and that's what a good subtle vignette does. It brings the attention of the subject to the viewer, but doesn't distract them with all this darkness around the sides. So before, after, before, and after. All right, let's try a new gradient. Now, I, there's not a tool specifically for this one in Lightroom. I think there's one in Photoshop. I know definitely that there's a tool for it in On1. And the reflected gradient is basically uh, two linear gradients, one at the top, one at the bottom, with the open part of the vignette in the center. All right, so let's go ahead and start that. It's a very effective vignette in certain photographs, and I think this one will do well with it. The first thing we want to do is we want to put a linear gradient on the bottom. So let's grab our linear gradient and build it up from the bottom. And once I have it in place, I'm going to double click here and put bottom so I know exactly what it is. And now I need something similar at the top. And to do that, I'm just going to go and create invert, duplicate and invert mask. And here it is right here. All right. And then I'm going to drag this up so that we're covering the sky. And I'm going to call this top. Now I, I do this so I don't get confused of what's going on. All right. Now let's darken our exposure for the top of our mask. We'll bring highlights down just a little bit. We don't want it too dark. It's right about right like that. And now let's go down to our bottom and darken this too. And now let's look at our before and after, before, after, before, after, and make any adjustments. Let's go back to our top. And this is the reflected part of the gradient. Go to the bottom, change that exposure just a little bit. And then we have our before, I meant before, after, before, after. So we do have a nice gradient, a nice vignette on the top and bottom. But to make it pop just a little bit more, we're going to grab one more uh, radio gradient. We're going to draw it right through the center here. We want no feather, or 100% feather right here. And we're just going to give a very light touch of exposure, about like this. Maybe look at the shadows just a little bit to bring up some of the, the leaves on either side of this. And now let's look at this. Before, after, before, and after. You notice that we're taking the attention away from the bottom and the top of the photograph, and we're bringing a little more attention to that church right in the center. And you can uh, change this gradient any way you want that you think might help you. You can move it around, and see if you get that light exactly like you want. Remember, hold your Option key, and you can bring just this side up just a little bit, about like that. If you hit your H key, it will hide all the pins and the circles so you can see exactly what's going on. And now let's go before, after, before, after. So this is a what I call a reflected vignette using linear gradients. Works really good on some pictures, not so well on others. But when it does work, it really makes a photo shine. All right, let's try a gradient on this photograph. We're going to start out. Uh, like we do with the other ones as a radial gradient. I'm going to shrink this down just a little bit and we're going to put a large radial gradient starting about right in the center of the picture about like this and we're going to hit the invert key and we're going to darken down the edges just a little bit. Um, let's protect our highlights a little bit more and with our shadows. So if we look at our gradient before, after, before, after. Now I want to add a little more attention to the light and I'm going to put it down this path. And to do that, I'm going to use another radial gradient. And we're going to start off the canvas and we're going to move up like this. And we're going to switch it around so that this gradient is going right down the center of this path. And we're going to add just a little bit of light, just a very little. It's still not a natural look. So what we're going to do is use a uh, 
intersecting mask. So we're going to use an intersect with a linear gradient. And we're going to drag from the bottom down, about like this. Oop. Let's try that again. Let's get Command Z. And we're going to intersect with a linear gradient. There. Now we can drag down like this. And what we want is the bottom to be lighter and the top to be brighter. I mean darker. So this way it allows us, if we turn our overlay on, we can see that the overlay is hitting most of the upper part of the trail and not the bottom part. So that's how we like. We want the top part to get lighter and we want the bottom to be darker. About like this. And we can stretch this out if we need it to be a little more effective. If we need to change the direction of the path we can move it by this tab up here. Now let's look at our exposure. About like that. We're getting a little bit in the trees here so Let's hit subtract with a brush. We'll have a flow pretty high and density. And we're just going to use the edge of the brush for the feathering and just clean up on the sides here. Now let's look at our about like that. So let's look at our before, after, before, and after. Let's turn the overlay off by hitting the O key. So here's our mask before, after, before, and after. And here's the vignette before after, before, and after. It's real important using the intersect on the trail mask because here's what the entire mask looks like with the intersect. If we didn't have an intersect, so let's turn the intersect off, and you can see it's very bright. So we don't want it to look like that. And when we apply the intersect, we get darkness, which fades off into light as we move down the trail. All right, let's try another mask on another photograph. All right, let's do just one more. Let me just show you what a vignette and a scene like this, how much it can really make a picture pop. All right, this is the bubbles in uh, Acadia Park, and it is a good shot, but we can make it just a little bit better. So we're gonna grab a radial mask, and we're gonna take it right across the center of the picture about like this. Oop, a little off center. All right, and we wanna get some of these rocks in here. And we're going to click Invert, and then we're going to bring our exposure down. Now this is the blue hour, but look at this. It's even a better blue hour while we're keeping our sunset. Uh, that nice golden light really enhances the picture, make it pop. And now let's grab our shadow sliders and open up some of the shadows in the gradient. Look at that. Let's see if we add a little white, about like this. Here's our before and our after before and after. One simple radio gradient vignette can really take a picture that's really good to one that really pops off the screen. Well, as you can see, adding an effective vignette really makes your picture pop. If you understand the concepts of even the, the simple post-crop vignetting tool or using masking with intersection and adding spotlights with radio gradients, all these things really bring the viewer's focus into the area of the photograph that you want them to see. I hope everybody got something out of this. If you have any questions, please, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email or leave me a note on YouTube, and I will get back to you and help you any way I can. And I can't wait to talk to you again soon.